I am here in my newly renovated office. We're kind of going through a lot of change because got the assistant Dana and she's absolutely killing it. I finally feel like kind of my life is back in a place that is, it's a good place. It's, I'm starting to feel better about workflow and everything else and it kind of got me thinking about back in the day, the 22 things happy people did do differently. We did a series on that. You can find the list online. It's nothing new, nothing necessarily special, but it's a great reminder. I think not only for myself, but when I did it, a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, like that, that really helped me through this part of my life. So I want to do a updated 22 things happy people do differently. Um, and today is day one. So kind of just a little bit about where this comes from. It's, it's online and it's all about, you know, 22 things that I think you make habits that you do habitually because a lot of time I think we can get caught up in this voice in our head. There's a volume that we can either turn it up or turn it down. And this between here is gonna either make things easier for you or harder for you. Everything that you need to, to really create a happier life starts up here. Now I'm gonna be the first person to say life isn't all sunshine and rainbows and butterflies. There's gonna be times in life, there's gonna be things that happen, outside things that happen that you're gonna to wanna to be mad about, that you're gonna to wanna to be sad, hurt. And I say, don't, don't push those into the back of your head and, and just pretend everything's happy and put a smile on your face. That's not at all what I'm saying. You need to go through those feelings. You need to feel things. You need to be able to, to be mad about things and hurt about things. But I think going through those feelings and then realizing, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this way. What are some things that I can do to maybe speed up the process or what can I do to, to now that I'm going through this, whether it's, you know, getting laid off, a breakup, you know, a death in the family, all these things are tough, negative things to do. But what can oftentimes happen is we just start spiraling down, spiraling down and one negative thought or one depressing thing turns into many, turns into more negative thoughts and then all of a sudden, you're at a very low place in your life. So I love the quote that, you know, it says something to the effect that life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we react. All about attitude, all about knowing that things are gonna happen in life, there's gonna be speed bumps along the way, but preparing for them, and then also when they do happen, allowing yourself to go through them, and then getting back on the horse, and getting back to the things that do make you happy, getting into that successful habits of being happy. So these are habits. It's not things that people do 100% of the time, but they're habits. And a habit takes a while to create. So we're gonna be doing these one every week. And maybe write them down, go along, put it in your phone, and just work on it. Think about, okay, this is what's gonna happen. This is how it's gonna go down. And I'm going to just work on this one trait for a week. So real quick, there's two types of people in the world. Those that choose to be happy and those that choose to be unhappy. That right there, again, I think that's a general statement. There's gonna be times that you're definitely gonna be unhappy in life. I don't think the meaning of life, I don't think we're on earth here to be happy. I think we're on, on earth to serve. And then it's kind of funny because through serving your fellow man, through serving you know, your, your heavenly father or whoever it is, that spiritual side, that moral compass, that is where true happiness comes from, I think is serving. So you can't be happy by thinking about the traditional things that make you happy. You know, typically we don't think, oh, I wanna be happy today. I'm gonna go volunteer at an orphanage or whatever. But you think about the times that you feel the best, it's usually the times that you're serving other people. But here we go. So contrary to popular belief, ha happiness doesn't come through fame, fortune, other people, material possessions, rather it comes with, within. It does not matter how much money you have. It does not matter how many Instagram followers you have. Some of the happiest moments in my life have been the times when I've been at the lowest and I'm just starting to dig myself out. Some of the most unhappy times or the most empty I felt is after winning a bodybuilding show, winning a contest, getting a cover of a magazine and feeling like, ooh, I should be happy, I, be, I should be, and you just kind of left empty because it's not really fulfilling. It's not really, um, the process is sometimes you're more happy in the process than you are with this something that you build up and then it kind of lets you down. So you can be happy no matter what. You can be happy, you know, with one Instagram follower because all of a sudden you get a lot of Instagram followers and what happens? You want more, you want more, you want more. So it comes from within. The richest person in the world can be miserable while the person living in the slums can be the happiest person in the world. Maintaining a positive outlook and being at peace. So just that peacefulness that comes from knowing that, hey, I don't need more than what I have right now. I'm not holding grudges. I'm living within my right hip here. My happiness is contained up here. So 
Happy people have found good habits that enhance their lives. They do, diff they do things differently. And what I mean by that is they have successful traits and habits that creates their lives to be different. And when negative things come along, they have better tools to cope with them. And they already are in these habits of doing things that make them happy. The first one, don't hold grudges. This one's so difficult. Happy people understand it's better to forgive and forget and to let their negative feelings crowd out those positive feelings. It's hard to have a positive life when you have negative feelings about somebody. Holding onto a grudge has detrimental effects on your well-being, including increased depression, anxiety, stress. Why let someone who has wronged you have power over you? Why are you giving your power away to somebody who might not care about you or to even someone who does care about you but who has wronged you? If you let go of all your grudges, you can gain a clear conscience and enough energy to enjoy all the good things in life. If you, if you are having a grudge and you want bad on somebody else, it's hard to have a good conscience because deep down in the back of that head or deep down inside your heart, you know you're not wishing well of your fellow man and that actually plays a role in your life. And I think we all have family members. I come from a big family. You know, I'm one of, of seven kids. And in a big family, you have a lot of personalities and you have a lot of things growing up that, you know, even in as an adult life, you have people that, you know, think mistreat you. And there's going to be times that other people think you mistreated them. But what ends up, you know, we, what ends up happening is inevitably something happens and one of two things. I've had family members that, that I haven't spoken to in, you know, in like a month because I was mad at them. I've had, you know, we've had other fights in the family. But what I always, I always just, it, it gnaws at you. You might work with somebody that, you, you know, you don't necessarily like but you need a work relationship with. So you have to forgive, you have to let go. You have to be okay at saying, ah, oh, I didn't like what you did. I don't like how you treat me at times, but I love you or I, I work with you, I wanna respect you and I want you to respect me. It's about setting healthy boundaries with people. People, you know, being ahead of the situation, not letting things build up, being proactive, setting boundaries, letting people know, hey, I don't gossip about people or hey, you know, like you, we're, we're not allowed to talk about politics because we differ on things and instead of me and you getting escalated and getting out of, out of hand, healthy boundaries are a great thing to have with people and healthy people have lots of those. But let go of those grudges right now in your life. It could be anyone out there. Maybe call them up after this and just say, hey, you know, I, I've been feeling this way. We haven't been speaking. We, we know we're not the friends we used to be. And, and here's why. I don't want to feel like that. I'm letting go. And I encourage you know you to do the same or or I'm doing this because I want I want to feel better inside. And I just needed to tell you, you know, how I felt and that, you know, I appreciate you listening and um, then you have that clear, clear conscience. You have a heart that's not holding a grudge. And that's day one of the twenty two things happy people do different. We're gonna do one of these every Sunday as a one take. Thank you. You guys will link the description to this in the bio and we'll see you guys next time.